So you wanna be a mecha pilot, huh? Or at least the closest, most affordable experience that we can get in this day and age. Hi, how's it going? As I said before, I was gonna make a guide on this, and so here we are. Uh, today, we're just gonna mainly be going over the setup for getting joysticks working with uh, Mecha Break or any other game that's not native to this. Now, there are three programs that you will need to be able to do this, and that is DJoy, Hid Hide, and Joystick Gremlin. I also have to give credit to Red Leader Live. If it wasn't for their original video covering this, I wouldn't be able to do anything I'm doing right now, and uh, I'm basically just kind of giving you a condensed version of what they go through. If you need help with things that are a little bit more in-depth, I actually recommend going to his channel as he covers the complicated things that you may find uh, like combining accesses or even splitting them. So again, big shout out to him for posting a video way back when that actually showcases how to do this because I would have been lost without that and uh, yeah, gotta give props where props are due. And now, first things first, of course you're gonna want to go to these three different sites, download the programs that you need from here, just get the executable, install them, and then once you have that all set up, you are actually gonna have to restart your computer a couple times just for everything to get it set up correctly, but I'll go through everything that you need. Now, for the first step, make sure that you have all of your devices unplugged. It will mess it up if you leave them plugged in, so just take that precaution now and make sure that you, yeah. Now, once we actually have everything disconnected and you're good to go, you'll want to click Configure VJoy and, uh, you know, of course, allow the app to make changes, da 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 da. Alright, so when you first see this window, it's going to look a little bit different. I'll have one up to show you what it should look like, um, but essentially the number of buttons option is going to be grayed out. It's going to have 32 there. Then you want to go to the bottom here where it says Enable VJoy, click that, and then click add device from there it's going to prompt you to reboot your computer go ahead and do that and once you're back you're going to want to basically do this process all over again but instead now this should no longer be grayed out it should allow you to put 64 here which is the amount of buttons you do want to put on there uh, make sure the pov hat switch still says continuous and has four click add device one more time and do this process again with the reboot and you should be good to go from here with uh this is just, should be the last time you have to mess with VJoy the config. All right, now once you're done with that and everything's been rebooted again, you are good to plug all your devices back in. And here's where we're going to get into the part of it where we actually combine all of these into one thing. Because essentially right now what is happening is your computer is recognizing these as an individual device. And the games don't really, but most games at least, don't have a way of natively handling that. So basically what we're doing with Hid Hide is we're tricking the computer into thinking that they're... These, these devices' inputs are not showing up on other things than what we intend them to do. So when you go on to Hid Hide's configuration, basically what you're going to do is you're going to come and click this plus sign here, and when you do that, it's going to ask you to find, like, basically where the executable of the file is in your directory. Um, and so the easiest way to go about this is essentially just go to your program files. Typically, they're here, or they are in the program files times 86, or... Uh, joystick Gremlin specifically, you want to go to H2IK, and then bam, Joystick Gremlin's right here. The executable application's right there. You just double-click that. I already have it, so I'm not going to. You will need to do the same thing for the Xbox 360 controller emulator if you do intend to use that. I will be showing that towards the end of the video, but uh, that is more of an exception for certain games and applications that either don't like theme input or have issues with it like Mecha Break did initially, um, but we'll go over that when it's necessary. Once you have both of these set up on here, you want to go to the devices side and basically everything that is not the actual virtual joystick, the VJoy, you want to have checked. The Win Wing stuff is plugged in and it is now hidden from the rest of the computer. So if we try to do anything on here, it is not going to actually register on anything besides Joystick Gremlin. Now, on Joystick Gremlin, speaking of, uh, let us go ahead and get this program open and kind of showcase what this can do. Now, to set up your controls and everything, it's going to look maybe a little overwhelming at first, but I promise this is a little bit more... It's more simple than it, it seems to be at first. For my setup, I have three different devices that I'm using. A set of Logitech uh, Flight Rudder pedals, a set of Ursa Minor joysticks, and each of these counts as one individual device. So as you can see up here, we have the pedals, the left stick, the left stick, and the right stick. Now starting off with on Joystick Gremlin, we're going to go over the X and Y axis for both the left and the right stick. So what you'll want to do, let me just kind of get rid of this. I'm going to save my curve because I don't want to lose that. But the initial thing that's really important is actually just having the remap. So you're going to want to click remap. It's going to add it down here instead of at the top just because of the order of things. And then you're going to want to go and just click X axis, as simple as that. And you're going to want to do the same thing for the Y axis on your controller as well. 
once you click remap, add the Y axis to the VJoy device, you'll be good for this one. But for the right stick, you're going to want to go for a different one. The right stick on the X and Y axis, you have to choose X and Y rotation. If you don't, it is going to show up as the exact same input. This is the only way to kind of like separate them inside of Steam and any other game that recognizes this kind of uh, interaction. So just go ahead and make sure that you have the X and Y rotation set up for the X and Y axis on here. Now, once you get the basic portion of this set up, if you want to actually mess with the sensitivity and curves, all you have to do is go to the response curve option on here, click add, and it'll bring up the same thing I have here. Personally, I go with the cubic bezier spline over the cubic spline. I just prefer it. There's not really that much like I, I, I don't know the depths of this to really speak on it, but I would at least say to for sure use diagonal symmetry. That way, anytime you make any adjustments, uh, it is going to be in the exact same spot on the opposite side and not have very weird implications like this would instead. Um, I, I prefer the cubic bezier spline though, just because when you click on this, it it feels more like the response curves that you would see in game and drag. I, I could just not. This is again. I barely scratched the surface with this. Definitely go uh, check out the other channels that have more knowledge and uh, more in-depth guides on the nuances that this program has. Just because I really just did the base amount for things like Armored Core 6, Mecha Break, Elden Ring, uh, etc. And moving on to the buttons, this is going to be a little bit more simple because essentially, when you press something on your device, it will show up in response to which thing you have. Each individual thing you can go through and map out how you see fit, but just to kind of show exactly how you do that, it's the same as you would with the... Uh, here, let me go ahead and press one that is not mapped out right now. Um, so, on here, you would want to click Add next to the Remap button once more. When you do this, it'll bring up the next free button that you can have on here, which again, these go up to 64 because of the V-Joyce thing that we set up earlier. The device may have more than that, but... Yeah, um, the max you have available is 64 because of how we set things up, and then you can just go through and add each button that you need as, it see, as you see fit. If you need to set up with like a keyboard instead, you can also go to map to keyboard, map to mouse, though some things are a little weird, and uh, for example, if I put open bracket as a option on my button, it will show up on a text document on an internet browser, da da da, when I press that button. But for some reason, Mecha Break, it will not accept that input, even if I do it on my keyboard and it does show up. I'm not sure as to why that happens, but I did want to preface that that is a thing that I experience sometimes, which is why I typically go for controller inputs instead of keyboard ones. Now, as for how complicated these get, honestly, for the kind of experience that I'm going for, you do not need this. As I just showed, this technically has up to 128 buttons on it, and joysticks I had before this are more than enough. Hell, you really don't even need the pedals. If you go back and check out my videos, the Rummy video I did initially, I, I didn't have the pedals, I just had the joysticks. Uh, essentially, you can use the hats on these as a D-pad, or more than that, you can just give it different options on here, like your lock-on, uh, start menu, different things like that. On the left one, I, I mean, they have three face buttons and then the triggers. So essentially, I would just make A, B, LB, LT, RB, RT, L3, R3 on the face, and then the D-pad on the left one. Um, and I would have different buttons configured for this, like X and Y would be like left and down, and then up and right would be you, you can make it how you please right it, there is more than enough options on here there's also face buttons here where you could choose to have start on the on this instead um but you don't need something this complicated by any means and really the pedals are just an addition that kind of i went for because i thought it made me feel like a little bit more like a gundam pilot and i think that's kind of you know the, the mecha pilot feel in general just kind of has that showcase a lot of times so that's why I wanted them, and I do like how they feel. Alright, now once you have all your buttons set up, what you're going to want to do is click this little controller in the top left of this, and this will basically show that your device is on to the rest of your computer. And again, when we have this set up, if everything is done correctly, VJoy should be the only box that isn't checked on here. That way it is the only device that is showing up to the rest of the computer, so when we go to Steam here in a second, it will be the only thing that can be picked up uh, input-wise. Now, for games, you want to go to their preferences, and 9 times out of 10, 
They will probably work better if you enable Steam input because this is a non-native, it is a third party, it, basically it's not an Xbox controller, it's not a PlayStation controller, and it's not a Switch controller. It's, it's something unique. And uh, that is the uh, for for generic. It's a generic controller, which is the easiest way to handle this. That's why there's a little blue thing right there. The easiest way to handle that is either by clicking the controller here and pulling it up right here, or just right clicking it, going to properties, going to controller, enable Steam input is the third option on here. Real quick, uh, before I actually go into this, I'm having to restart this part because I forgot the show. Um, a very cheap alternative to getting a mount set up is Velcro. Just getting. Velcro, um, depending on your table, I may or may not recommend this. Uh, mine is, as you can probably see through this camera, just a, I don't know what this material is, but like white plasticky thing that is not going to have any texture peeled off of it or anything. Um, I actually had to change out these for, like I had to change the placement of my Velcro strips for the new joysticks. And when I peeled them off, the previous ones, they left no sticky, gooey thing. I think this is really going to depend on which ones you buy. But I was able to just get a wet paper towel and take off the tiny little bit of an outline that was left and then reapply it how I needed. Um, but then, yeah, so all that allows for a temporary setup. They're, they hold up to 16 pounds. That's pretty good. I've never had an issue. I've never had them just, like, come off. Uh, and then, you know, I just go through on here. As you can see, I'm shaking it like the camera's moving. This ain't, go this ain't going nowhere, you'll be fine, and it might be a little annoying to have on your desk, but again, cheaper alternative than buying like a $150 mount system. As for the part that I meant to get to, because I didn't realize this wasn't fastened, uh, let's go to the setup, and here, I don't know why it always skips A for me, uh, maybe in the future you'll have a version of Steam that doesn't have this, and has had this address, but essentially, um, you're just going to want to map out the rest of your controls if you are dealing with this issue. You'll have a way to fix it in a second, don't worry. Uh, but from here, just go ahead and, like, so I have the left trigger for B. And so now it's going to say preparing to test input, starting test. Yada yada, right? You can see everything is working except A because we didn't assign that one. And for... Okay, anywho. Um, so for this now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up device inputs again, right? And for whatever reason... It's there now. So now you can hit A, B, X, Y, uh, all that good stuff. Now, the thing is, though, some games just don't like Steam input. They, they will not work, and they will, like, for anyone who's ever tried to play um, Zone of the Enders, the Steam version of it is a buggy, horrible mess that crashes at anything. Like, it, it just crashes for no reason whatsoever. If you try remotely to use any Steam input, it crashes the second it registers anything. Like, like I swear, at least on my side, if you want to try on yours, feel free, but I found a workaround to it and many other games that have these issues, including Mecha Break at first, surprisingly. So, what I recommend, uh, let me pull it up. What I recommend is the Xbox 360 controller emulator, which you can see is basically just going to have all the inputs in a very similar way to Joystick Gremlin. But the thing is, you will actually have to have this on Hid Hide the same way you do VJoy device. You can see on my devices, I do have Xbox 360 for Windows not hidden, for the same reason that VJoy device is not hidden. Depending on the game, you may want to have you may want to have VJoy's device hidden. For Zone of the Enders, I did, or it would crash. For everything else, it was fine. I could leave it off. So. Just know that that's there and that is the workaround. Uh, but essentially all you really do is go back to this, make sure that now that on Joystick Gremlin you have um, the Xbox controller showing up in this window here. Turn the controller back on because we this we want to leave blank. We, we don't want anything being picked up here from the controller. We are actually basically doing what Joystick Gremlin does, but just faking it as an Xbox 360 controller. So now you can go back to this and just click every individual button and like uh for the the joystick like you can just hit it once for some reason it has it, it knows if you if you hit one input on there where the full thing is um but l3 and stuff you know still map it out a trigger b trigger x y da da da, da and, and you can see everything uh going on as it should 
And then this will basically just be a workaround for any time that Steam input isn't working because basically 99% of the time, if uh, if all else fails, 360 controllers work on Steam and most games are natively compatible with them. So you can just use this as a way to be like, yeah, I am using a 360 controller. Um, as for keyboard and mouse related things, I just don't really try to emulate those. So that I won't personally have any guidance on, and I'm sorry if that is something you were looking for here, uh, but I do recommend just looking around in the other channels that are proficient in Joystick Gremlin and actually do this as like a more kind of regular thing for things like Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous because that is just something I want to look into in the future but have not yet, and uh, for other games that use mouse controls uh, for the camera and stuff, I, I haven't ventured into that area. Though I haven't felt the need to yet, um, and everything that I have played has been totally fine with this. But yeah, that is probably the most straightforward way I can explain how to get this done. Uh, by going through and just having the Xbox 360 controller emulator as a backup as well. That allows you to do things like Mecha Break in the initial part of the beta. It was just... For some reason, I, I don't know what happened, um, but now it works. Now when I go to the first... Part of it before the patch or something happened if i tried enabling steam input and doing what i normally would do this would not work it just flat out would go no um but the xbox controller emulator worked so yeah that is a easy workaround um if you do have any questions i will do my best to answer them in the comments uh i can't guarantee i will have the answer but i will try to look around and see if i can at least find something that will get you on the right path hopefully um, outside of that, just hope everyone finds this as a fun way to play anything. You, this goes beyond just mecha stuff. You can, like, I played Monster in a World, uh, Elden Ring, the old gen Armored Core stuff, which I guess it is mecha, but you, you can, you can do things beyond what Steam has. I do hope this helps out anyone who is looking to get this kind of setup going. Um, I really appreciate all the support everyone's been giving me, both here and on Twitch, where we're doing just, like, tons of mecha break stuff. We're gonna be going into Wilds next, and, uh, I'm probably just gonna play Wilds with the host set up for the, for the laughs, and to see if you can pilot a monster hunter. But, yeah, thank you again for coming through, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful time. Peace!